Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about two different things. The first one going to be my experience shooting with the Kentamere Pan 400 black and white film and my first time shooting street photography on my Canonet QL17. This little guy I actually bought for my wife because I wanted something easy for her to use. But unfortunately, when I, f I found out that the light meter in this camera does not work, so it either has a bad cell or uh, there's something wrong with the battery. She was gonna have to learn a little bit more than she wanted to when she's taking photos. With that being said, I decided, you know what, I'm actually gonna start using this camera as more of a daily. It is such a small camera when compared to my Canon AE-1. So, I mean, you can see it's just a little bit larger um, and quite heavier because the lens adds a good chunk of weight on it. The one thing about this camera is that it is a fixed lens, so it has a 40 millimeter 1.7, but to me, that works just fine. My experience shooting with this camera is very positive and it is a very affordable option if you're looking to get into rangefinders. Most of them are anywhere between 80 and $150 which might be a little expensive, but when you're comparing it to either a Leica or a Bessa, honestly, this is a good way to go and it works just fine. So when shooting this video, I did not ha yet have this external light meter on my camera. I'm currently testing it out to see how I like it, uh, specifically for my trip to Italy, because I don't enjoy having to take my phone out every time and I want to meter something. So. I've been testing this bad boy out and so far, so good. And if you wanna see a video about that light meter and some photos, go ahead and leave a comment about it and like this video. In regarding Pan 400, I'm gonna talk about just one quick thing and that is the comparison between HP5 and Pan 400. So the main two differences between the Pan 400 and the HP5 that I have found is that the Pan F400 is has a higher dynamic range and it is not as contrasty as the HP5. And then the second thing is the grain structure. So I believe that the HP5 does have a better grain structure than the Pan 400, because when I have done at-home scans on both of those film stocks, I'm able to zoom in on the HP5 and keep the detail there more than I am on the Pan 400. It just seems to lose a lot of detail in that grain. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into the photos that I took. And I'll tell you what, they turned out a lot better than I expected. So the QL stands for quick loading on the Canonet. And as you see me pointing out right here, if you just put the tip of the film up to this little red line and you close it, it's going to feed the film in right away with no problems. Well, maybe just a small one. You guys will see when I show you the photos. Let's go shoot some street photography. So I don't know if it was a loading error or if it was a winding error on my Canonet. These two photos ended up overlapping each other. And honestly, I kind of like the way it looks just because, I don't know. It was kind of like a happy accident. Like I didn't mean for that to happen, but I kind of like the way it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the photos that I did zone focusing on and I didn't really know how they were going to turn out. So this first one uh, is of this elderly woman who was walking by with her husband and honestly I didn't even know if she was going to be in frame because I haven't shot a lot with a 40 millimeter lens so in my mind I can't picture where the frame lines would be. So I just... You know, as they were walking by and I was walking by, I just kind of held the camera, just went, turned it sideways, and then hit the shutter button. And I was like, hope it turned out. And you know what, I really like it. You know, you can tell that there's motion being had, that they're walking by. And I'm really proud of myself that 
the lady, the main subject of my photo, is in focus. Uh, you can tell that the other two gentlemen aren't really that much, but I think for my first zone focusing photo, I think I did a pretty good job. All right, these next three photos, I probably shouldn't have taken as many as I did of this guy, but I just thought his shirt was hilarious and also a fact. <laughs> the first one I knew I messed up on, I I think I pressed the shutter button a little bit too early before I was ready, and I got this second one, but in my mind, I was like, I don't think I got all of the back of the shirt, so I went ahead and followed them for a little bit, and then I got this third photo, and I think the third photo is my favorite. Um, I just like the dynamic of this younger gentleman with the shirt that he has next to what I'm assuming is his grandma. If you're watching this video, I apologize if that isn't your grandma. <laughs> I like the contrast between the youth and the elderly, and I just, I just thought it was nice. So this is probably my favorite of those three that I took. This photo is definitely one of my favorites. So you'll see this guy with curly hair. This is my best friend, Timmy. And he was sort of my subject. I used him as an opportunity to help myself get into the street photography realm by taking photos of him interacting with people at the rally. So instead of taking a lot of photos of someone I don't know, interacting with someone else I don't know, having sort of that anxiety, I decided to be like, hey, everyone's just thinking I'm taking a picture of him because we've been walking together. So I'm just gonna have him interact with people or just take pictures of him interacting with people without him knowing. It's street photography. It's just, you take something in the moment that stands out to you and it means something to you. And then someone else, they might enjoy it. But what I've learned is always take a photo that you will enjoy and that you'll like, not what you think someone else is gonna enjoy. The dynamic range that this film has is really quite amazing. So even though it feels like the detail and grain structure of it isn't that good, the ability in this particular photo to have those people as lit up as they are with having that cloud detail in the background on a really bright summer day here in Colorado to me was really quite amazing. So here is another series of range focused or oh my goodness I did it again of zone focused photos that I took of this gentleman and his wife because I just thought that they were really interesting characters. I really liked the last one because I wanted to get this Italian man handing some gelatos to some people being framed in between them. And so I think because of that, this one has to be uh, my favorite of the four that I took. Another cool thing about this is that there was a small car show going on. And so I just went over and snapped some photos. I was a little bummed I didn't have color because these cars were like baby sky blue and, you know, Ferrari red. But, you know, I went ahead and just, I went ahead and took the pictures anyway. And you know what? I really like the way they turned out, mostly because I like old cars. That's pretty much it. So I think this photo has to be one of my favorite of the day. And honestly, I think this was the photo I was the most scared about taking. So there were these two little girls playing with each other. And I just really liked how they were interacting. I just guesstimated and zone focused how far away they were. And I just turned the camera sideways and snapped a photo.
All right, y'all, so I finished up the roll. Half of these, I don't even know what they're gonna look like because I was, my first time doing, what is it called? Range focus. <laughs> oh my gosh, I already forgot what the term. I honestly have no idea what half the images are gonna look like because I was range focusing the entire time. I don't, I think I looked through for like a few shots. Um, so I haven't shot this and never done street photography doing that. So I guess we'll just see how they turn out anyways. We'll see how it compares to HP5. It could be better or worse, um, but who knows? It could also just be me. Anyways, I love you guys. So yet again, Nate is in this video. He develops his own film. And so if I need a roll quickly, I usually give him one or two rolls and he will go ahead and develop them for me. Black and white is super easy to do. So he was so kind and developed this roll of film for me so I could have it ready in time to do this video for you guys. So as an overall experience shooting street photography and using this new film stock, I think it turned out and went really well. Street photography is an opportunity to not only do something that you love, capture moments in time that will never happen again when you're just out and about, but it can also lead to having amazing conversations with people and being able to get their photo. And then now you have something tied to that amazing conversation that you had with that awesome person. That is something that I really look forward to and enjoy about street photography. And again, I don't really have anything bad to say about this film. The only thing about it is that most places don't sell it, but you can actually get this film for a lot cheaper. If you just buy film from Ilford on their website, I highly recommend using Pan 400 if you want to buy a lot of black and white film for something, but you don't want to spend the extra $10 buying the same amount in HP5. Hello friends, Future Drew here. I forgot to film an outro, but just to sum everything up about street photography and Pan 400, I did really enjoy it and you will definitely be seeing more on the channel in terms of using the Pan 400. And I might experiment with some other black and white film as well while I'm out doing some street photography. And I also might try doing some color with it as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down. I would really appreciate it. And if you really like the video, go ahead and hit the like button as well. And stay tuned. I'm going to Italy in less than a week and I'm going to shoot a whole video about Kodak Gold. I'm going to be shooting 120 and 35 millimeter while I'm there. And it's going to be an awesome video. I can't wait to show you guys. But until then, goodbye.